Hi there, this is Doris Venter of Library Arts. I wanna welcome you to my program, Little Hoot, a clay sculpture, which we're gonna create after listening to this delightful fall story called Little Hoot about a little owl. And then we're gonna be using some mixed materials to create our own little owl inspired craft. You know, I love picture books and making crafts to go with picture books. So if you're a picture book lover as much as I am, you're gonna really enjoy this craft. So let's get started by reading the story and then we'll get right into creating your own little hoot. See you in a moment. Let's get started with a reading of the book, Little Hoot. By Amy Krauss Rosenthal and illustrated by Jen Corrins. Once upon a branch, there was a fellow named Little Hoot. Little Hoot was a happy little owl. He liked going to school, even when other kids are obviously falling out of their seats. He liked playing hide and seek with his forest friends. Hmm, can you see any of his friends hiding in the woods? I can. Do you see a rabbit? Do you see a bear? Or maybe even a skunk? He even liked it fine when Mama Owl said it was practice time. Time to practice pondering, sweetie. Okay, now practice your staring. Staring right, staring left, staring right. But there was one little thing who did not like. Bedtime. Because when you're an owl, you have to stay up late, late, late. That's just the way it is. Meanwhile, all his friends are going to sleep. All my friends get to go to bed so much earlier than me. Why do I always have to stay up and play? It's not fair, he thinks. If you want to grow up to be a wise owl, you must stay up late, said Papa Owl. And besides, I don't give a hoot what time your friends go to bed. In this family, we go to bed late. Rules of the roost. Stay up and play for one more hour, then you can go to sleep, Mama Owl compromised. One whole hour? He boo-hooed. One whole hour, she cooed. So off he went. When I grow up, I'm going to let my kids go to bed as early as they want. He played swords. He played on the jungle gym. He built a fort. He jumped in the leaves. Can I stop playing now, pleaded Little Hoop. Ten more minutes of playing, mister, and please don't ask me again. All right, the young owl scowled. Do you see how he's jumping on his bed here too? Wouldn't that be fun? One minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. Six minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes, ten minutes. There, I played for one whole hour. Now can I go to bed? Yes, now you can go to bed, but... Woo-hoo, woo-hoo, bedtime! And little ho Hoot flew right into bed. But wait, stalled Mama Owl, what about a bedtime story? And don't forget a glass of water, added Papa Owl. But it was too late. Little Hoot was already fast asleep. Snooze, snore, drool. So they tucked in his feathers, gave him a peck on the cheek, and the, and the owl lived happily ever after. The end. I love that. When I grow up, I'm going to let my kids go to bed as early as they want. Okay, now that we've read this story, let's get going with our own little hoot inspired craft today. See you in a minute. Welcome back. So now that we've read that delightful book, Little Hoot, we're ready to create a craft that's inspired by the character in the book, Little Hoot himself. So I have some materials that I want to go over with you to show you how you can make a simple little, little hoot using model magic clay 
some cardboard, some peel and stick leaves, some wiggle eyes, and I think you're gonna be delighted with the craft. So let's go over the supplies. First thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need a cardboard base. So this is our little base, and that sort of represents the earth or the dirt on the ground. The next thing you're gonna want are two foil balls. That's gonna be for the body and the head of little hoots. You're gonna have two of these. In art, we like to call these armatures, and armatures are the structure that hold up the sculpture. So we're gonna build our clay around these foil balls. So you're gonna need two of those. And to help those foil balls stick to both the cardboard and to each other, I have two pieces of foam tape for you. You're going to need some fun colors of clay, and I have some uh, orange, red, yellow and white. You're going to have a couple wiggle eyes, and I like to give you colored wiggle eyes because I think that makes the owl's eyes stand out a little better. I'll put those aside. You're also going to have some leaves. These are peel and stick, uh, except for a couple that I just cut out here. You might have a few in there that are not peel and stick. Um, if that's so, just use a little glue stick or glue and you can get those to stick too. So now that we've gone over all our supplies, let's get started with building our little hoot and we'll do that in the next video. I'll see you in a minute. Let's get started. The first thing you're gonna need from your supplies are your two foil balls. Next, you're gonna get out your clay, which has been wrapped in plastic to keep it nice and soft. So if you have any leftover clay at the end of the program, I suggest you wrap it very tightly in uh, a clear wrap like I have here, or even a foil, but do it tightly so that the air doesn't get in there and dry your clay out. Okay, I'm gonna put the other clay aside for a minute, and we're gonna start with um, the head of Little Hoot, and I'm just gonna take off some of the clay. I always like to leave a little extra behind just in case I need it later. And what I'm going to do is cover one of my foil balls, which is right here, after uh, cover it with clay after I've flattened it out like a pancake. So you just want to flatten it out, put it on top of the foil. Don't make it too thin because if, it, if it's too thin, it's going to crack on you. So give yourself a little bit of leeway with the clay. And if it looks kind of lumpy like this, what I would do is just keep gently pressing, squishing, shaping it. I'm going to leave a little bit of foil here because when I use my double-sided foam tape, I wanna have just a little clearance where I could stick the tape on easily. So I'm just gonna press and smooth out that clay with my fingers. This is going to be the outside of Little Hoot's head. And one thing you might want to have, actually two, one would be um, a pair of scissors is handy to have nearby because it might help you in shaping the yellow and the other thing you might want to have is um, a black marker, which we'll use later maybe to add some details to your leaves. So that's kind of optional, but maybe a pair of scissors would be handy. So here is the white of Little Hoot's head. Then we're gonna take that yellow out. And again, what I like to do is take off a piece of the yellow, flatten it out, so I always wanna keep a little extra clay just in case I need it and or what, might wanna use it for something else sometime, right? So what I'm gonna do is I wanted to imagine that this is gonna be like a wig sitting on top of the head here. However, if you can imagine sort of an Elvis Presley haircut, I'm gonna put two snips right here and I'm actually gonna cut this little rectangle out like that. So what it allows me to do is put it on top of Little Hoot's head. So you get that sort of like, looks like a hairdo on top of the head. And I'm gonna flatten it and round it around the head. So that has a little bit of a curve here in front and a little bit of a curve here. And then I'm actually gonna go back and add a little bit of that rectangle that I cut off before after I pull some of this yellow down so it covers the white up in the back. So can, when you make a sculpture, you always wanna think, how does it look in the round? In other words, we're not just looking at the front. 
we want to make sure that the back is interesting as well as the front. A sculptor always thinks about their work in the round. Everything counts, not just the front. In a flat picture, like a painting or a drawing, you can only, you're forced to only look at one area. Now we have this little round area that represents little Hoot's face. So I'm just gonna pull it back a little bit so there's a little more white showing there. Now let's get back to that little rectangle. I'm gonna make it a little smaller and I'm gonna put it right back here. Now, if you remember, Little Hoot has this little bit of yellow that comes down the center of his face. In fact, let's find a picture where we can see it. You see that little bit of yellow coming down in the roundness? That's gonna leave room for his eyes. So we have this head that really suits Little Hoot. Now you have the white, you have the yellow. Let's find the two eyes that you got. You may have different color eyes than I do. I have blue, you might have yellow, you might have pink, any of them will look great. Now we definitely need a little bird's beak. This is where a little bit of that bright red orange comes in. Take a little tiny bit. See how much left I have? I have a ton left, okay? And a little bit of yellow. And this is the great thing to know about this clay. It mixes and can change color. So I have a little bit of yellow, a little bit of the red. I think I'm gonna add just a little more yellow and you can always alter it. And I wanna have it kind of an orange color, not so much the red that I had before. So I'm just folding it. I like to do a stretch and fold technique. So I'm gonna take, now that I have that little bit of orange, I'm gonna take a pinch off and I'm going to shape it into a little triangle beak, not very big. And it's gonna go at the end of Little Hoot's yellow shape here. So there we go. We have Little Hoot's head, yellow on the back, white on the front, curling around to make his feathered head. We got a beak here and we got some blue eyes. So I'm gonna put this aside, let you work on your little hoot head and we'll come back and together we'll make little hoot's body using the second sheet of foil. See you in a moment. And we're back. And uh, at this point, you probably have finished your little hoot head or you may be making a few adjustments still and that's just fine. I'm gonna put that aside now, get out my second foil ball and I'm gonna give Little Hoot um, a little outfit to wear. Just a little like bedtime outfit like he's sort of wearing in his uh, picture book. Um, mine's gonna be red. You could even have fun. Maybe you wanna put some buttons on it. Uh, maybe you want to um, put some dots on it using some of the other colors of clay. It doesn't have to be just one color. <clears throat> but I'm just going to cover the entire foil ball, maybe leaving just a little exposure on the bottom again so I can put my um, double-sided foam tape there. And then I'm gonna just see how it's going to look. So it's gonna look sort of like that. And I'm going to use the bottom where I left it open a little bit to attach the two. So I'm gonna get my double-sided foam tape and you might even find like, well, this is a little too much. So I just peel off the green paper and that reveals the sticky part. Peel it right off your wax paper. I'm gonna cut mine down just a little bit so that um, I only need a bit. I feel like I don't need the whole thing. And I'm gonna pull the clay up so it meets in with the head. And you know, I think it would be look kind of cute if I did add a little detail. Like maybe I'll take a little white, make a little collar uh, going around little Hoot's head maybe a little bow tie. I'm just gonna have a little fun with this. So I'm gonna wrap this white around the neck area right here with the white. If I need a little bit more to fill it in, I can. And it can also help to fill out any gaps in the back. Because remember, we wanna make sure the back is as interesting as the front. So here's my little hoot. I could definitely use a little more white clay there. So I'm gonna fill that in right there. So it looks like he's got a little collar on. And now I think I'll make a little um, yellow, 
little yellow bow tie, just a tiny one. Just again to make it look a little more interesting. There's one half the bow tie. Here comes the other half of the bow tie. Here comes the center. Ta-da! A little bow tie. Just like, pinch it there, pinch it here. So there we go. Here's little Hoot with his little bow tie on. And he's got his, his feathers that go around his head. He's got that white collar on. Now we're going to attach little Hoot. I'm gonna open up more of that foil down here so it can be exposed a bit. I think I might even add a couple buttons with that marker I talked about that you could have. And I'm going to watch that I don't misshapen his, make his head misshapen because I had it nice before, but as you work with it, sometimes it can get a little more squished than you want. I'm going to get my base, which is my cardboard base, and we're going to add that on next so that our little hoot can stand up. So why don't you finish making your little outfit, and when we get back, we'll attach him to the base and add the leaves so it looks like he's jumping into that pile of leaves. See you in a moment. Okay, we're back with little hoot finished. I'm assuming that you have that. You might even want to put a couple little nostrils with your marker on little hoot if you want. There we go, my marker wasn't working at first. And I'm gonna put little hoot aside and I'm gonna bring my base over, which remember, I'm gonna use the brown side of the cardboard. I'm gonna get my extra piece of foam tape. Now, when you pull this off, be gentle, because sometimes it sticks, some of the stickiness sticks onto that wax paper. So just make sure you still have some stickiness. Peel off the green paper. Stick that, you know, pretty much in the center of your cardboard. And this one, you're gonna put little hoot right on top. So he will be stable and he will stay put. Now, take all those fall leaves that you have. So little, little hoot is stuck here on the cardboard. Take those fall leaf shapes, which are peel and stick. So you notice that there's gonna be a white paper on the bottom. You can easily tear off and start to, whoops, don't wanna lose the stem here, peel and stick the leaves around the body because the idea here is that he is sort of has jumped into uh, a pile of leaves and they're surrounding his little body. So we're just gonna do this. And if you want, I mentioned the marker before, you can go in here. You can add some little leaf lines, little veins. So that's what I'm doing right here on this one. I can even do it while it's stuck onto his body. Little leaf veins, makes the leaves look like they've just fallen down from a tree. Gives it a little texture. So I'm gonna peel that one off. And again, I'm just going to kind of partially stick it onto his body. Here's another one. Oh, I'd like to make some lines on this one. And your leaves will be different for each of your uh, packages because I just bought a variety of leaves and uh, stuck them on there. So there's another one. Now again, thinking of the back, I don't wanna forget about the back of my project. I'm gonna put some lines on this one, like little veins, almost like in your hand, but, whoops, I didn't stick the, uh, stick that on right there. Oh, this one's not very sticky. So if that happens, maybe it's an old one, I don't know, use a little glue stick. If you have a glue stick at home or even some white glue, just stick it on with that. Handy solution, right? Uh, here's another big one. I've got some little ones I'm gonna add to in a minute, but I'm doing the big ones first because then it's easier to layer the little ones on top afterwards. So that's why I'm choosing to do that. So take a look at all around to make sure you're getting interesting effect all around. Here is a mushroom, that's kind of cute. So I'm gonna put a little mushroom in here. I could go over the little dots in the mushroom with my marker because there's these little fun dots that you sometimes see in a mushroom. Maybe I'm going to put some lines here and put that little mushroom on there. 
I got another leaf over here. And you know what's really fun is to actually take a leaf and put it on top of his head. Why not? Then it looks like not only has he jumped into the leaves, the leaves are even sticking to the top of his head. So I'm gonna take this one, another big green one, put lines again, little vein lines. And this is just fun. Makes it really, really cute. If you have real leaves that you wanna collect from outdoors and you'd like to add some of those, it's another thing you could do. That'd be kind of cute. Here's another little leaf. I think I'm gonna give him two leaves on top of his hat, head. I have a red one here and I have a green one. So I'm gonna take the red one, add some little lines here. And this one too ended up being a little dried out. Hmm. So I'm gonna take a little glue stick, put it on the back. And now I can have like two leaves on top of his head. Turn it around. I think I got one more leaf I can add out of my pile. And I'm gonna use it on the back because that just gives me a little bit more attention to details. Again, not forgetting that the back of my sculpture is as important as the front. And there we go. We have Little Hoot. He's jumped in the leaves. It's reenacting a little scene from the story. How cute is this? So go ahead and make your own and we'll be back to round off this craft in just a few minutes. Have fun with your leaves. So I hope that you enjoyed making your little hoot craft today and you thought like a sculptor, really paying attention to all the sides of your sculpture. I hope too that you enjoyed this book and that perhaps you'll look for it at your public library, Little Hoot um, by Amy Krauss Rosenthal and illustrated by Jen Chorus. It's a really cute book, a lot of fun to reread with your child, especially if they have their little sculpture here to read along with the book. So this is Doris Fenter from Library Arts. Thank you so much for joining me again. Stay well, stay creative, and I hope to see you soon.